Hello, everybody. Welcome to night one of our E3 2021 Boss Rush at Night coverage. I am one of your hosts, Corey Deering, and co-hosting with me this event-filled weekend is none other than the PC Muscle Race himself, host of Crossroads, the PlayStation podcast, Laron Dawkins. What's poppin', guys? How's it going? Hi, Laron. Are you excited for a very long weekend? <sighs> yes. Yes. I... I, I I, I swear this is going to put a crimp in my dating life right now. I, I swear. It's fine. You don't need it. You're fine. We already <laughs> you still have your left hand. It's cool. <laughs> God. How, how's, 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 how's you know? How did you, know, did you Logan, derail the you... show before we even started? Uh, also joining us is the co-host of Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast, the vault-dwelling lore archivist himself, Josh Finney. Hi. Hi, Josh. Hi, Corey. I feel like I haven't seen you in about twenty four hours. Yeah, it's 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 been roughly that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to see me a lot more over the next couple days. I know. Hold on, hold on, I hold know. on, hold on, hold on. Josh, Corey's seeing you more than he's seeing me. I. We need to have words. Mm. I mean, we do do a, t- a show every Thursday night. Tower Casuals on Boss Rush Games. Like, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Email the show towercasuals at gmail dot com. Uh, wow. I was also on Star Talk I this cannot, week, and I'm also on <laughs> QA season three. I cannot uh, believe I gave you a damn segue for a plug. I, I hate myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of hating people, in the fourth chair, head of Boss Rush Entertainment, <laughs> Justin Bieber's illegitimate cousin, I still Logan take Corkins. To this, and I love that you put restrictions on the dock of who could edit, so that I couldn't fix that <laughs> typo. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I know what's happening here. This isn't my first show, Logan. <laughs> it's not his first see, rodeo. I questioned that. Mm. I questioned that with the pre-show. You would think it's your first time being around the three of us. <laughs> I mean, I, mm. and finally in the fifth chair, making his first appearance on on a boss rush show, and you know he's probably. <laughs> He's probably regretting this every single moment. It's fine. From our writing team on the Boss Rush Network, Lamont Reed. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, Lamont. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. It's exciting. <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, hope, you're, hope you're enjoying your first show. <laughs> oh, every moment of it. Uh, Learned about the green tea cat, Kit Kats and... Everything is just like wow. <laughs> yeah, uh, that, yeah, I'm pretty much excited. Yeah, uh, that pre-show will be archived on our YouTube channel. So if anybody <laughs> wants to hear about, you know, Ed Snacklist and you know, ducks and giraffes, <laughs> the science behind that, <laughs> you can go look at that. <laughs> also, brainstorming Laurent's new nicknames like PC Side Boob and you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Logan. Logan told me when I um, when I update the wardrobe, it's gotta be like the deep cut muscle tee. So you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's the ones that you're always gonna get caught. You know, get caught by nipple. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, Logan. <laughs> Logan's already gone. So he's he's uh he's done. He's tired. <laughs> I hope he comes back with the pasties. No, uh, uh, I yeah, think that's, his, what that's what he's doing. I think his shirt came he said in the yes, chat his, so. e, his e3 shirts here yeah um well obviously this isn't a traditional boss rush podcast uh we are talking about summer game fest tonight uh, our our e3 celebration is happening it's very uh very very big big week this week a lot bigger than i expected honestly uh, Jeff Keeley's Summer Game Fest happened this week. We're going to talk about a lot of the announcements that happened, uh, a lot of the bigger announcements, and then we're going to talk about Netflix's Geeked Week, uh, which, you know, there was enough there to talk about probably to fill one show anyway. And uh, then we're going to talk about anything else uh, that may- we may have missed if somebody got excited about something. Uh, so speaking of Josh, did you ever think of that indie game you wanted to talk about? I did. I, I have it. I Great. Have Great, we can we can shove that in there somewhere, you know. Just spit on it; it'll it'll be fine. Uh, so, 
Uh, what do we what do we think of Summer Game Fest, guys? First of all, before we actually, dive I'm gonna be, I'm, I want to be real. Like last year, and Jeff was pretty upfront about this um, in the day or two leading up to it. That last year it just kind of like came together because E3 wasn't going to be a thing, and he says, you know, I just wanted a central location for everybody to be able to find stuff and you know do a couple of smaller things that you know otherwise wouldn't have gotten them. You know, the the Unreal Five demo, uh, the Tony Hawk stuff, like and his initial stuff he did last year, I was really excited about. Less so this year, and I mean, there was, there's a few people I follow in the industry who are like, you know, I get what Jeff's trying to do, but I don't really see a need for this. This, yeah. I think, despite some of the events being, or some of the announcements just being like, uh, like crap, like nobody cares about Paladins or Smite or things like that. Like, we, I think we all just like kind of took bathroom breaks during those. Mm-hmm. The rest of it, I thought, was actually pretty good. Like, he bookended it with two really exciting games. Yeah, he did. That One of which leaked, one of which everybody's literally been anticipating for, like, two years now. And he had some other really interesting stuff sprinkled throughout. Like, I thought this was actually pretty good. There were a few, like, kind of cringe moments, but that's to be expected when it's not really an in-person show. Yeah. I'm actually really excited to see how he grows this next year. Like, there's no way he doesn't do it again next year after the wild reception that ending got. Yeah, especially if, like, you know, E3 is still confused of what they want to be next mm-hmm. year, right? Like, that that seems to be a thing yeah. going on. I, I think it was great to show some of these games that, uh, again, other than those two bookends, would have had kind of a hard time standing out in an E3 lineup. Like, despite us being excited for a lot of these games... They would, they would have been like footnotes or like quick 30 second trailers during a PlayStation or a Sony con- or PlayStation yeah. or Xbox conference. Like, Agreed. Tales of Arise being here was really cool because I expected that to be at Xbox. And it's definitely going to be at Bandai Namco. But that then frees up a slot. Not only does that give Jeff something to talk about, that frees up a slot then during one of these bigger shows. Yeah. So it's yeah. a win win, I think, across the board. Like, okay, it's one more show we got to watch, it's two hours. Cool. If you don't want to watch it, nobody has a gun to your head forcing you to watch it. You can always read a, a write up. Like uh, we have a really good write up up on BossRushGames dot com right now. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, just to piggyback, just to piggyback off of what uh, Josh was saying. Um, actually, I was actually very impressed with the Summer Game Fest. Of course, there was a there was a couple of snooze moments in you know throughout the show and stuff like that. But overall, when you compare it to last year's show, which yeah, Keely did admit it was kind of thrown together and stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, there was a lot. It there was a lot more substance this time around, you know, and uh, and I appreciate I appreciate the format and the way he did it, you know, like it was nice. Like he got he had a couple of interviews sprinkling out there, like the John Carlo Esposito uh, interview was was pretty nice. I, I like that. It was kind of weird though. It was only like three and a half minutes though, so you know, it's like it. Uh, it so I don't know. I liked it overall. Um, it was not bad. I. Everyone knows me. I'm not the biggest Jeff Keighley fan, but I actually yeah. think he actually pulled he actually pulled together something pretty nice this time around. Yeah, I'll say I feel this way. I feel the same way I do about this as I did about both the Game Awards and uh, the Gamescom show the first year that those aired, the first year or two, where I felt like there was a lot more they could do, especially with a guy who's been in the industry as long as him. Yeah, uh, who like knows how to do like TV style hosting gigs mm-hmm. and. I actually, like, I, I may not, like, really care about, like, who wins awards at Game Awards, but I'm really excited for those reveals. Like, he gets a lot... But they unveiled, unveiled fucking Series X there, for God's sake. Like, mm-hmm. he, he's, he's gonna get big things. Like, they know that if he gets something, he's not gonna let it leak out, right? Like, it, it's a very tight-knit crew that he works with for production, and, like, in a year or two, I can see this being something that we, we actually look forward to. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I thought the biggest thing I struggled with was um, <clears throat> was pacing, and there was there was a thing, few things you could have cut. I mean, there was the stuff with uh, I know Ember Moon and um, uh, Hannibal Burris that little playthrough with Keeley didn't really seem like it really fit within the show. Um, I, I thought the beginning part was really good. Of course, you know I'm going to get excited every time Ashley Birch is on the screen. So like I love that. But it was it was that middle section that really just kind of fell apart. Like yeah. I, I was texting with Josh the whole time, and and it was it was that thing where it was like you know I, I love I love this idea and I love what he tried. Just you got you got to tighten it up, make it tight. It, there was no reason for it to be an hour and a half, solid hour tops. Yeah, it's this was a two hour event. 
Yeah, that, that, that second, I will say from about, because when Logan and I were talking, like Logan literally texted me at about the 45 minute mark and was like, is it nap time yet? <laughs> um, same, so I would say thing. from like about the 30 minute mark to like maybe like an hour, 10, hour 15 was just like dead space. And you could have probably cut like if you compiled all the free to play stuff and all the stuff like honestly, nobody really wanted to see into that. You could have made this down into about a 75 minute to 90 minute show. Show, and I think everyone would have loved it. Mm-hmm. Like, like the Paladins thing could have been like team up with GameStop and do like here mm-hmm. uh, today we're doing a gift card. Uh, we're going to give away a bunch of gift cards. Here's a free thing. Let GameStop put it out on their social media. So there was no reason for that to be here. There was um, I, I, the what? Yeah, Smite didn't belong. I will give Keely this is like he does do a great job of trying to make sure everybody feels represented, um, right. including the Japanese that's, games. And, and that's the and one that awesome. thing. Yeah, that is the one thing I would give him credit for. No matter what show he's at, he's doing, whether mm-hmm. it's Summer Game Fest, where it's the Gamescom show, whether it's uh, the Game Awards, he tries to make sure everybody gets some type of like, if not even stage presence, at least they get some type of recognition and something like that. And I'll give him credit for that because there's a lot of these other jokers out there that put on these shows and put on these events and stuff. And you can tell they cherry pick their favorite stuff. Or they cherry pick the stuff that they know is going to get them sponsors later on. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Lamont, what did you think of this? Um, I was actually, I was going to say about the whole Amber Moon uh, thing. I, I was. I felt pretty much the same way. Um, I was, oh, about maybe 40% into everything. Um, I got really excited for the Metal Slug Tactics. I thought that looked pretty good. Um, yes. And, yeah, and the Elder Rings, I, I just wish that, I, I really hope that that Tactics game comes out in consoles. Um it's just a PC right now, I think. I'm not too sure. But um, but overall, um, I really enjoyed Jeff Keighley's passion. I was just really hoping that he got the reception that he deserved. Hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I just, I just really felt that for him. Um, but I, I think he did a way better job than he did last year. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, and like with the Ember Moon stuff too, is like you could have gone with the up, up, down, down angle. Like you could have just sent it over to Austin Creed, let Austin do it where he has a little bit more of a personality. You could have made that stream a little bit more the up, up, down, down, high energy style. Like there's there's choices Keely made that I don't agree with, but like I I get why I did it. (laughs) So can can I float something here? I think like part of my issue with this is it happens so close to E3, and I think that's kind of got to be frustrating for Keeley. Like I get Keeley's trying to kind of piggyback off that, like kick off the week, but no publisher is going to want to give you a major, major title. Like yeah. PlayStation and Xbox want to support these things. Like they, they clearly they show stuff at his Gamescom show. They show things, definitely major things at the Game Awards every year, but nobody's going to want to show a major franchise or make a major announcement at this when their own conferences typically take place within like 72 hours of what Thursday's event was. So well, did, you what know, if he, did you notice too that he was careful not to mention E3 at all during his, during he, Super he Games? Go, yeah, I thought about that. Uh, okay. Because he mm, used to um, do the Coliseum events for E3 and yeah, they had yeah. a really messy breakup last year over it. Uh, uh because he was like, I can't support what the ESA is doing anymore. I can't be a part of this. Like, I don't like this. I, I don't like the way that they're they're trending the show. Like, it's clear. Like, he he wants to do more more interviews and things like that, and they just simply didn't want to fund it. So, what if you took this event and you moved it to if you're truly kicking off the summer season? What if you did it like the first Thursday of May? We'll and you're idea. getting it. You're getting it far enough away from E3 that maybe Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo want to participate a little bit more no. beyond just, hey, here's some free DLC for a gamer. Shuhei coming in and being like, here's the sequel of Salt and Sanctuary, which a lot of people tuned out for. I think, like, yeah, I did, I did. Maybe we, maybe that's how you give like, uh, here, here's a, here's a gameplay teaser for our next PlayStation IP. You get, you're gonna get an extended demo at our E3 showcase next month. Or on our state of play uh, next, since they don't do E3 anymore, at our next state of play on uh, June fifteenth, for example. 
Right. Like, what if you do something like that? You give them a two minute snippet, and then you get like the full six minute reveal in the state of play. Something like that, I think, would be really cool. Like, he's a guy that if I was a game developer, I kind of want him to show. Not maybe not if I'm like a first party dev, but if I'm a third party dev, like the guy who's working on Evil Dead, I would want him to show my game because he's going to get more attention to it than a Microsoft or a Sony one. Right. And then the- no. <laughs> Now, the one thing I think is kind of crazy about this whole thing is like, man, like he's gonna he's gonna stretch this thing out until July twenty second. So he, I, I want to clarify on that. He's not. What he's doing is he technically took all the events that are happening this summer and put them under that banner. That's all it is. Yeah. He's not actually doing things. He's been really clear that yes or yeah, yesterday's event is the only thing that he is doing this summer. No, oh, okay, okay. He's doing that, okay. and he's doing Gamescom in August. That's smart. Like usual. That's smart, yeah. though. So. Not like last year where he tried to pretend like everything was under his banner. Like, he's still saying it's part of Summer Game Fest, but that's because he's trying to aggregate everything on one web page. Like, he's not actually trying to host everything. Yeah. Or be like, oh, you know, like, yeah. I'm the reason this came together. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's because EA Play got bumped to July. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, now the only thing I'm two bourbons deep. The only thing I want the only thing I want to talk about is uh, that Mel Slug tactics because in all honesty, I have all the stuff they showed that night, and I know I know you guys are about to razz the hell out of me. I have all the stuff. No, that they game looked that, awesome. Yeah, I want it on yeah, Switch I, though. I, that feels like a game that, that I would play. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's it's going to come to Switch because what happens is like games are on PC, then they wind up on Switch, then they get the PS4 and Xbox One. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we're gonna yeah. we're gonna talk about that a little bit more in depth later in the show. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna kind of run through this list of games here. Uh, kind of, I would say I don't want to say order of importance, but order of uh, just kind of I feel like popularity a little bit. So uh, Wednesday, right? It was Wednesday. Battlefield twenty forty two was announced. Uh, it is taking place in the near future as they say uh you know it's it's happening we thought it would happen uh obviously the rumor of it coming to game pass day one was not true and that it was dropping this week was not true uh battlefield 2042 will not have a campaign it will not have a battle royale uh which i think a lot of people were surprised at but it will include 128 player battles on next gen or on current gen systems. So if you want big player battles, that's where you're going to want to play that. Um, how do you guys feel about Battlefield? I think it it. I'm not a Battlefield guy, but this is the it it was the most interested I was in Battlefield. But that's not saying much because obviously I just don't really care about Battlefield. But it, it looked like they were trying to take on Call of Duty head on, and I think that. Setting it in a near future environment in a year where Call of Duty is rumored to be going World War II is pretty smart. Uh, no, thing I'm going to say about this is like I was really excited at first because I, but I was thinking it was Battlefield 2142, which in my opinion is one of the one of the best Battlefield games because it's not the, the traditional formula. And then I was like, oh, 2042, and then I saw what it looked like, and I was like, oh man. It looks good though, but it wasn't what I expected. I saw the forty-two, and I immediately thought it was like the next version of Battlefield twenty-one forty-two. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people thought at first too. Yeah, so, it's like... so I was underwhelmed. I was underwhelmed, but this still looks good. It still looks good. Yeah, I'm yeah, totally game. here for this. I'm I'm more of a Battlefield guy than a Call of Duty guy personally. Uh, I played an ungodly amount of uh, Battlefield three and four. Really, really enjoy them. Obviously, I've kind of fallen off the Battlefield wagon because they did Hardline, Battlefield 1, and Battlefield 5, none of which interested me. Uh, But them not doing a Battle Royale, good. You can't compete with it. EA already has Apex Legends. They don't need another Battle Royale. Yeah. Yeah. Doing a campaign, not doing a campaign, that kind of bums me because I really like the action set pieces that DICE does. But I realize that I'm in an extreme minority of people who actually play those campaigns to completion. Um, I'm the guy who will, I play Call, I play Call of Duty for the storyline, guys. I don't play it for the multiplayer, and that's not a joke. Uh, but they probably looked at what Activision did a couple of years ago with Black Ops Four and saw that it did not stop slowing down. 
people were actually really happy that there was no single player campaign in that game. Mm-hmm. So I think when you take things like that into consideration, that's cool. I'm bummed that there was no actual gameplay. It was a six minute cinematic trailer. Yeah. And yeah. we have to wait till the Microsoft show for Battlefield gameplay, which I think that's a little dicey because for me, ah, that all I confirmed. see what you did there. No, no, to me, we're all, but I, I, I get like, oh, it's to build hype. Like it's probably part of the EA play partnership with game pass. Like I understand the, the logic behind this, but to me, that screams the like a bigger sign for the Microsoft show. You might not get the Halo multiplayer reveal that everyone was thinking we were going to get, like we did with five. Mm-hmm. They'll probably just say, "By the way, here's a new campaign demo. We're going to have the multiplayer beta available for you right after right. the show. We're not going to show two first-person shooter multiplayer reveals in the same show." You don't think they so, would do that? Uh, they they won't. That's what I'm saying. Like they're not going to um, do that now. Um, well, and then you also have to assume we're getting at least another six to eight minutes of this with the Microsoft Showcase, too. I mean, Right, which is to... the other thing I'm not overly jazzed about. Right. Um, I mean, like, they, they easily could have made their own event out of this. Like, I, I could, Call of Duty reveals their stuff in Warzone now, but, I mean, you could have had, with all the build-up they did to this reveal, there's no reason you couldn't have given us this trailer last month and given us the gameplay reveal on this past Wednesday. It feels like the gameplay going to Microsoft was probably a last minute move. Mm-hmm. Like Microsoft may have just delayed something out of the show and been like, Hey, we really need something. Would you guys want to bring this in? Cause so many people were like, it is happening the first week of May. And then it didn't happen. And Andy McNamara over at dice had to come out and say, Hey guys, we're really sorry. We were planning on it this week. Uh, we're doing it in three weeks though. So we'll see you guys like the first week of June. And that was just like really weird PR coming from dice of all people. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do know. like in the chat. I do like in the chat. TNT and three just said, uh, you know, God's strength is modern warfare, or at least Cold War. Era. If Battlefield tries to go down the same path that like Cold War is, I've been back into Cold War for the last week or so, and it's and I'm 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 back to having more fun with Call of Duty than I've had since like Modern Warfare. I mean, this game like where Call of Duty is at right now, I don't think it can be toppled as far as an FPS. So like Battlefield unless they go to World War Two. Even then, I think they're fine. Did do people did people mm. like World War Two when it came out? It, the people loved it. I played it when it was when it, I, for the first six, six, seven months that it was out. The issue with World War Two was that they had one gun that was extremely OP, and it took them two months to fix it. It was like this flamethrower that was supposed to be a special. It didn't end up being a special. It, you could use it as a secondary weapon or as an attachment. And yeah, it, people hated that. But the maps in World War Two were phenomenal. The maps were outstanding. Um, I, 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 I'm loving it. Okay. Uh, Lamont, did, did, did you, did you, what did you think about Battlefield? I'll be honest with you. I've never played a Battlefield game in my life. Um, I'm probably more Call of Duty than anything, Mm -hmm. but I'm definitely willing to try Battlefield out. It's, it really looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean, if you if you have Game Pass Ultimate, you get that ten hour demo, right? Because yeah. you get EA Play in it. So you do. Yeah. You get the, okay. Yeah. There's a okay. ten hour demo if you have EA Play or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, uh, or I guess EA or- Origin. Is that what it's called still, or is it still, is it just called EA Play? Origin. Okay. Origin. I thought, I thought it was EA Access. What? No, it's they EA Play. The they changed the that point. to EA Play. So oh, I. Okay. Uh, either way, you you get that ten hour demo. Uh, if you have Game Pass or EA Play, you get that ten percent off if you decide to purchase it. Yeah. Uh, so there's they're they're really oh yeah I need that <laughs> yeah I I think they're really trying to get people in this into this game, and I bet this game comes to Game Pass faster than you think it will. You know what I mean? Like I, I really feel like especially especially like. If it's coming out in October, I'm pretty sure Call of Duty will probably end up at the last week of October. Halo's coming out in November, right? We, Josh, we've talked about this too. That's yeah. why probably a lot of the reason why Destiny got out of the way, right? Yep. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, it looks neat. I'm willing to try it out. If I get 10 hours of free demo, that's probably all the time I would probably put into it anyway. So, Right. Uh, I mean, sure. t- t- if you don't know after 10 hours if you want to keep playing a multiplayer game or not, uh, 
so, spoilers, uh, you don't. I don't to. know what to tell you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> spoilers, you don't. You don't need those ten hours up right away. Like you can play a few, and if you if the game's super broken and needs patching, come back like a month or two later and pick up the rest of your demo. Yeah. Um, you're not into multiplayer without telling me you're not into multiplayer. God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so we're we're gonna move on here, Josh. I'm I'm picking your brain about this one because I I I I want to know. Uh, the next game we're talking about is Elden Ring. was was a surprise reveal. I feel like here, uh, big trailer, story, combat. Uh, it it looks like a From Software game, a very pretty open world From Software game is what it looks like. I and, can't uh, believe that Jeff Keighley got this. Yeah, this this to me is what screams that Summer Game Fest is going to keep being a thing for at least a few more years. Yeah, is the fact that he got Bandai Namco. I I really wonder what he had to do to get Bandai to give that to him, and for them not to save it for either their presentation or as we were starting to hear uh, late yesterday. It was originally planned for the Microsoft show because they do still have the marketing on it, Mm -hmm. and it's not going to be seen at all on Sunday. So what on earth did he have to promise? I wonder wonder if that's what they pulled and put Battlefield in its place. You know what? That would actually be possible. Yeah. Uh, That, that, That would make a lot of sense, but... Uh, the game, the the hype and the fervor surrounding this game is astronomical. It's some of the most I've ever seen for a new IP, and that's that's twofold, right? It's from software's pedigree. When's the last time from software made a bad game? Like I mean, before Demon Souls, I guess before like, the original Demon Souls. I like, mean, I guess so, what I the last like not great game they made was Dark Souls two, right? I guess. I mean, I I know it wasn't bad, but I know people don't seem to hold that as high as the rest of. I mean, I would still say it's an above average game, personally. Like the, yeah. the point is, From Software hasn't made a truly bad game in a long time. Kingsfield like, Seven. <laughs> they, they they're a pretty well regarded studio, and I mean, it's it's from Miyazaki, who's you know he's the guy behind Bloodborne, the guy behind Dark Souls, Demon Souls, etc., mm-hmm. and George R. R. Martin. This is what that rat fuck is doing instead of finishing Winds of Winter. Is he's writing a new universe. And the one reason I'm really excited for this game because I don't like Dark Souls. I don't like Sekiro. I've never <laughs> tried Bloodborne, but it's downloaded to my PS5. To You're that guy. Plus collection. I'm that guy. This is the closest I'm going to get to Winds of Winter and A Dream of Spring. So I'm going to have to play what if, it to get What if some he doesn't finish the books? George R.R. R. Martin storytelling. What if he doesn't finish the books and you just have to play this game to figure out what happens? Dude, okay, I'm already having to live with the idea that the HBO finale is going to be the finale to the series and I'm already not happy with that <laughs> so I don't need any more traumatizing thoughts right now Corey but th- this is a game that feels or, like it was made for me or you find an abandoned library and the rest of the books are in this library and you just have to sit I, in the I library maintain, and... I maintain that he's finished Winds of Winter and Dream of Spring and he's just not going to let them be released until he's dead so he doesn't have to listen to people complain about him probably uh, this is the plot to National Treasure 3, page 47. Oh, my God. Dude. Oh, God. Nicholas Cage, call me, baby. We're going on, isn't we're Di- going on an adventure. Si- side Get Martin tangent. Freeman in on this. Side t- tangent. Isn't Disney, Plus, isn't Disney Plus doing National Treasure 3? Disney is working on it. They are doing a TV series. Aww, they are yeah. Jerry Bruckheimer's <laughs> back. They can't get Nicolas Cage. He doesn't want to come back to play Ben Gates again. Why? He's also probably like getting too old for it, frankly. No, he's not. Just, just, old... just get the guy that they lost in The Hangover to replace him, right? That was his sidekick in that movie. Riley Poole? I don't no. know what his name was. If Riley's the lead character, I'm not watching. I'm not watching. <laughs> Just get John Voight. <laughs> All right, I definitely can't get him right. Bye. Now. You know what? The let's only... cast. Let's let's cast Tom Holland as a young Nick Cage. They already I... did that. It's called Uncharted, and it's from Sony. Oh God! <laughs> All right. I said this. That... I, I said this earlier in the pre-show, but it, but it, bear, it bears repeating here. Like Austin and I talked about Elden Ring, and I was like, you know, like it looks good, but it looks like a game I'll never touch. And Austin's like, yeah, same here. <laughs> Like, I'm actually really intrigued by this one, um, and I wish they would have made more of an emphasis on it during the trailer. I'm sure that they will on Monday's showcase with Bandai Namco, but it is four-player co-op. 
and it's open world. And both of those things really excite me because the whole thing about Dark Souls and Demon Souls is like, yeah, I get that it's supposed to be like hard on purpose, and that's part of why I don't play them. If you're telling me I can go in and play this with other friends, though, uh, that would make it a much more enjoyable experience for me personally. Uh, those other gosh. games are all multiplayer. Okay, true multiplayer. I'm not talking like you just have to. Like you just have to ring the friends. special bell. And then no, somebody that. else has to ring a special bell, and then your <laughs> souls connect, and then you no, become. Fuck, fuck that! I, I want to actually party Gosh. up with my friends. And, and then, you, then you have to stand That's in the same wrong. spot, and you're in your worlds, and then you warp to each other's worlds, and then you become bell take buddies. It, take it from me, Josh, a guy who plays Monster Hunter World, Monster Hunter Rise. When you put more players in the game, the game gets harder. That's not true. Listen, I played a lot of Bloodborne co-op. It was not hard. Yeah. Turn on your location from software. I just want to talk. I just want to talk. <laughs> you call me on my cell phone. Okay, that was okay. That was Josh's final thought right there. There we go. Ah uh, <laughs> man, is uh, is anybody else excited for Elden Ring? I mean, I, I'm excited just for the simple fact that Josh is so excited. So I know that there's a decent chance I'll like this game. You know yeah. what? You know, what, uh, you know, I'm the same way. If Josh gets warm and fuzzies about games, these are games I need to pay attention to. No lie there. It's what, like, I didn't buy into the hype until yesterday. Like it's it's narrated by Osiris from Destiny. Like guys, it's just it, it's tailor made for me. Okay, <laughs> but I real I re- like the story is really what intrigues me about this. Like I know from software games have really good lore behind everything, um, but I'm excited for a more straightforward story. <laughs> Martin has developed the whole overworld. Like I don't know. Like this game could be really bad, but I for, first off I don't think it will. It's from. And I mean, I just I really want another original world from George R. R. Martin, yeah. frankly. <laughs> Even if he's not the true like overall writer, he's just like the project lead. Like I'm still excited for that. TNT three <laughs> is popping is popping off in the chat right now. I know. <laughs> I TNT. I know who that is. I know yeah. who that is, by the way. But I'm not going to yeah. say anything. TNT says he he got the name Elden Ring from how long it's been since the New York Jets won a ring. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the beauty of dating a Jets fan? They're never going to expect one? I mean... (laughs) Oh my lord. No, that's the Detroit Lions. No, they're going to win one now. Now that they've got a guy... The Jets have at least got one in their franchise history. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> don't but it's like the bears ring we don't really remember it we just know it was there <laughs> Corey, what's next oh god get me out of here um <laughs> god i don't even know what's happening anymore what happened to this uh, show the, the, the game that i'm really excited for is next uh okay so oh, really yeah one of the surprise announcements that i thought was going to get announced at the take two event uh, but it was announced here was Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Uh, this game, I'm not a huge Borderlands guy. I actually just re-downloaded the first one to try to maybe play through a little bit of it. Uh, this game looks amazing. It's it's t- and Tiny Tina is kind of, if for people who don't know, is a fan favorite of a lot of people who play Borderlands, right? She's a, a side character. Uh but they made it clear that this was not a Borderlands game. It is Tiny Tina's game, uh, starring Ashley Birch, right? And then a whole slew of people. Andy Samberg, Wanda Sykes, Will Arnett are in this game. Uh, it's it's kind of based off of the uh, Assault on Dragon's Keep DLC for Borderlands 2. Somebody wrote a really good article on this, if you want to check it out on BossRushGames.com. Uh, <laughs> it, it, Logan, tell me why you're excited for Tiny Tina. I'm excited because this is giving me two cast members in this, and I'm not talking about Birch, ironically, um, that haven't been in a lot of video games, but when one of them has, it's been a huge impact. When Will Arnett, his cast as Lego Batman, like that just always felt like a perfect role for him. But him doing more video game related stuff is just a beautiful freaking combination of a really skilled voice actor with someone who brings more charisma and more charm to most characters than anybody else I know. I mean, Will Arnett is a phenomenal choice. And then, gotta give a shout-out to the 9-9 with Andy Samberg getting cast. I mean, I never knew I really wanted Andy Samberg in a game unless it was like a buddy cop with him and Judge Judy. Uh, like, this this is, this is a perfect game for Andy Samberg. 
And then you combine that with, okay, a video game legend like Ashley Birch, who has just been all over the place with Outer Worlds, Horizon, doing everything that she's done. I mean, this could be one of the most complete casts we see as far as the voice acting is concerned across the across the board this year in video games combine that with it is borderlands borderlands has always done a good job of building at least stories and characters that we care about so i have high high hopes for it i wasn't a huge borderlands fan until one lemon scented man named austin campbell really tried to get me into borderlands and <laughs> i've become a huge fan of it ever since i mean i can't wait to see what this game ends up being tiny tina's been my favorite character for a long time i cannot wait to see where this game goes yeah uh Josh, we talked a little bit about this on Tower Casuals. How are you feeling? Um, Especially because of the D and D aspect to it. I see that. So that's what's getting me. Like, I've never been a massive Borderlands fan. Um, I just recently got into Borderlands Three, uh, waiting for this latest Destiny season to start. I was playing through it with our friends, uh, Nerd and uh, Colonel Panic, and it's been a lot of fun. But I definitely get the criticisms on Borderlands Three um, after playing through it. This looks like it's way more up my alley. It's a standalone game. They made it pretty clear that it's Borderlands, but it's not. Like, it's not in the Borderlands universe. Like, it's basically in Tina's mind Mm is kind of the vibe I'm getting. Like, this is something she's imagined. Mm -hmm. Um, And for it to look like it's going to combine Borderlands with D&D is really, really exciting for me. I play a lot of D&D. For anybody who doesn't know, I play a lot of Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, so I'm excited for this. I'm excited for Dark Alliance. Anything with dragons and guns, sign me up. I'm here. I'm here for it. <laughs> dragons and guns. Dragons and yes. guns, baby. And then add in an awesome and super talented voice cast. Uh, like Logan said, I never knew I needed Andy Samberg in a game until now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, yeah. it looks like you're not playing as Tiny Tina, though. Because they like later in a press release, they said that the, that character at the beginning who was shooting the dragon was the player character, which makes me think that the player character is Andy Samberg. Will Arnett's probably the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, that would. Well, I, I can even see it inverse. I could honestly see them making Andy Samberg a bad guy. Yeah, a comedic bad guy. Yeah, yeah, especially yeah. with like how handsome Jack was handled. Right, that was his name. Right, the the bad yeah. guy. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lamont, what do you, how do you feel about this? Oh, I'm very excited about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, oh, so, yeah, um, sorry, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Lamont. Oh, oh no, 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 go ahead, go ahead, so, I'm no, sorry. <laughs> I was just going to say, I found, the, I found the press release. We can put these questions to bed. Once yes, please, all. Josh. Okay. Uh, correct me. Uh, in Wonderlands, you create your own multi-class hero and loot, slash, loot shoot, slash, and cast your way through outlandish monsters and treasure-filled dungeons on a quest to stop the Dragon Lord, played by Will Arnett. Joining you are the headstrong Captain Valentine, Andy Samberg, and rule-obsessed robot uh, Fret, uh, played by Wanda Sykes. Mm. Wow. You just answered every single question we just asked, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh Man. Yo, yo, uh, now that I know Wanda Sykes is playing the robot, man, like we expect all sorts of like trash talking uh, oh my gosh. His, hysterics. Oh you my can, god. You can create your own character, though. This is something that I've been like screaming at Borderlands. I want to be able to make my own character, not just have to pick a pre selected character. Yeah. Like, you're going to let me multi class it? Like, that, that is some true D&D shit right there. Yeah. Is this is this going to be multiplayer, did they say, or is it single player? Um. I'm looking. I don't. I, it I feel play. like the format could be multiplayer. I feel like it could. I feel like there'll be a multiplayer mode. Like I expect that. So there's a Gearbox stream on Saturday, and then there's a 2K stream on Monday. We're gonna probably see it at both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Should I hope so? Yeah. So, uh, bo- at bringing actual Borderlands guns to fight dragons, skeletons, goblins, and more in a fantasy world imagined by the galaxy's deadliest 13 year old Tiny Tina as a new full feature AAA video game. Hmm cool well i'm definitely gonna check this out i i think it looks awesome yeah uh yeah. for sure because i've always liked the idea of borderlands it just i'm i'm lonely and i don't have any friends so i'd always play it by myself yeah which is not the way to play absolutely way better with friends yeah maybe if you didn't call me justin bieber's illegitimate cousin you'd have friends well maybe if you <laughs> cut your hair and didn't look like justin bieber's illegitimate cousin we would play together logan Jesus. Why don't you go watch another episode of High School Musical? 
I have already <laughs> cried today. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, 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 guys, can't we all just get along? He knows I'm joking. We're actually planning a <laughs> high school musical watch along after E3's over. By the way, hold on. Can, can I take one quick second and, yeah. and ask the people for help? Hey, people. There, you amazing people. If High School Musical Review that I'm working on right now is the number one article on Sunday, Dan is going to join us for this watch along. So please, is click he? on it as much as you can. Oh, he gosh. is. He made a bet with me. And if it's not, I have to write an article about how Breath of the Wild is a very underrated game and that I love it to death. So basically, I'm just going to have to write some yes. Wait, what are we doing again? What are we doing again? We're going to do a High School Musical watch along, Lauren. Yeah. No, not no, 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 not not we as in me. No, you no. you're joining us now. You're in it now. <laughs> yeah. You're in it now. We're all in this together, man. <laughs> We're all in this together. I hate you. Move on. Move on. <laughs> Please, yes, move on. Oh my gosh, that was awesome. You didn't know, you didn't expect me to do that, did you? Did not. Oh, you didn't oh. expect me to get my head in the game, <laughs> did you? <laughs> you know, I'm really mad because you didn't notice the what team post I did the other day for Monstrous D3 promo. I I saw it. Oh, yeah. thank you, Lara. Oh my god. Okay, I we're saw get, it. Let, okay, we're we're getting out of here. Uh, speaking of <laughs> speaking of things that people don't want to do, Death Stranding's director's cut is coming to PlayStation Five. Uh, I don't really understand what this means because isn't he technically an independent company? Why did he cut things from his own game? Because time frame, because he no. only had like okay, yes. wait that that stranding was what forty hours. I don't, I don't know. I didn't play it. Actually, so. actually, actually, I've 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 heard it can be be, be uh, modest like sixteen to twenty hours. Sixteen yeah. to twenty, yeah, and that's if you don't do all the errands and the extra errands yeah. and stuff. This, this freaking campaign could go up to sixty hours easily. Mm-hmm. My understanding is that he had to cut stuff because. Sony likely went to him and was like, hey, well, we kind of need something now. We teased this at the beginning of the generation. And, uh, or like four, it, what was it, like four, almost five years from announcement until release? It was four. It was four years. Or, yeah, yeah was- I think they probably got to a point where they were like, hey, we need something. Yeah. Like, Which, to be fair, he pulled it off four years. No, it's, no, it's- yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying, you know, like, they, they probably, you know, were like, hey, we're going to need something pretty soon. You can do a director's cut eventually. Like, mm-hmm. As soon as the game came out, he said how he wanted to do one. Yeah. So. No, I, I get it. I was just, you know, being mm-hmm. being the angsty host. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm really interested. Josh, on that, on that note, do you think that this game has any chance to come to Game Pass? Do you think that's happening at all? Nope. No. Nope. No. Uh, so, so Sony, like I've seen some people go like, well, Sony didn't publish it on PC, which is true. They did not publish it on PC, but you have to remember this is made with the Decima engine from Gorilla. Right. Yeah, and that's that, that alone horizon. kills it right there. Yeah. Even if Sony didn't own the IP rights or publish it on their console, that like you still run into that issue. Like they're probably okay. Like okay, fine. You know, it's going to go to PC. Whatever. We're not going to allow this on a competitor's platform though. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lamont, did you play Death Stranding? Uh, you know what? I didn't. Um, I was going to, then I heard some mixed reviews, so I, I'm, I think I'm definitely going to probably check it out. Uh, well, this one on the uh, PS5, see what this, see what this is all about. Yeah. <laughs> so far, I was just hearing uh, like you can finish the game, and like you said, it's like 20 hours. It's walking simulator, whatever that means, but. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely going to check it out. Yeah, I feel like I feel like this. Yeah, I feel like this new generation is kind of the place where you want to play, you know, later gen games from last from last gen. You know, like Ghost of Tsushima got that 60 frames patch, which Josh, I know you're going to talk about that. Oh across God, dude, point. it's so good. Uh, you know, a lot of these games are getting those those upgrades, and uh, I feel like that this would probably benefit from that. Right, so never been a better time to play Death Stranding, yep. guys. Never been a better time. Better time. Oh yeah, uh, Logan. Yo, how do you feel about Death Stranding's director's cut? Love it. Yeah, absolutely love it. Um, look, I, I played the game. I haven't beat Death Stranding, so I need to get back into it. And I need to beat it. Um, 
I, I think really what it comes down to, like for me liking the director's cut, is give me more of the Mads Mikkelsen side of the story. Um, I, I really like how they did his character in this game. And I think the director's cut could go a little bit deeper with that, and I really hope that's the way they go. I mean, it looks like we're getting more Norma's and Rita stuff, which I'm never going to complain about. So, like, cool, awesome. But overall, like, I, I'm excited for it. I'll play it, for sure. Laurent? Uh, yeah, I'm on the hype train for this, uh, given that I, uh, I held out and got the PC version of it when it came out. Um, so, yeah, that's another strike on my... Uh, crossroads uh, pedigree there but you know whatever uh but yeah uh, hey, the playstation PS5... games are coming to pc two years after they launch right like phil spencer said <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i uh, you know what as the resident pc muscle race bossers games i'm here for it <laughs> yeah I mean, right now, they, it, Sony's got this nice scheme going on because I'll buy the game on one console and I'll buy it again on PC. So they're getting the, they're 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 uh, Sony's becoming the the new age Capcom. That's all. <laughs> don't worry, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, Laron. Uh, Monster Hunter Rise will be on PC soon, so you can put your Switch away and make fun yeah, of that's us again. My, yeah, that, that's one of my big announcements that uh, that Monster Hunter Rise will get announced on the Switch sometime during E3. I mean, I'm sorry for PC on uh, at E3. Yeah. Uh, all right. So th- this next game is, I think, one that I'm actually really excited for. Uh, Tales of Arise uh, got a new trailer. It showed off the villain for the first time. It showed off the world. It showed off the party uh, all together for the first time. I don't know if you guys are big fans of the Tales games, but I really love Tales of Symphonia, which was the first one I played on GameCube. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. yes. Tales, uh, Tales of yeah. Exilia 1 and 2 on PS3 were really good. Tales of Asperia actually just uh, before this trailer even dropped, I got on Switch for real cheap. I'm going to play through that. Like, I just think the Tales game is a really, really good JRPG. You know, if you're looking for something to satisfy you between, you know, whatever Final Fantasy 7 Remake 2 and whatever else, Tales games are are awesome. So I, I really yeah. loved the trailer too. Very cheesy. Very felt very, you know, the dialogue was very cheesy in a you know, dubbed anime <laughs> way. So yep. Uh, but Tales of Arise, man, it looks gr- it looks great. I love the way yeah. this game looks. Um, so how do you? Yep, guys- and, it's right, and it's right around the corner too. September. I know. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited. Uh, you Wait. know, I, I missed the release date. When was it? September tenth. Uh, September tenth. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. I was a huge fan of the uh, Vesperia, um, Tales of Vesperia, and yeah, you you like I was that? that on the PS3 too. Yeah, I would love it. Yeah, Man, and good. Uh, y- yeah, this game looks really beautiful. I can't wait to try it out. Yeah, uh, man, I'm I'm glad you said you liked Vesperia because I was like. I don't know. Should I get it? Should I not get it? And then I bought it, and then I realized it was on Game Pass, and I was like, "Oh no, it's fine." So, uh, anybody else excited for Tales of Arise, or am I, or or Lamont and I the only ones? I'll keep my Game Pass. I'll play it. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. I'll keep my eye on it. Um, I, 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 I've I've always been in this weird place of uh, JRPGs since. uh, Yeah. Since Final Fantasy VIII, honestly, I've been in this weird place of JRPGs. Like they, like they, they don't always grab me the the correct way, and so I usually skip them. Cool. What is the correct way to grab Laron Dawkins? Uh, more, <laughs> more games like Mass Effect. By the muscle titties. More, 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 uh, more RPGs Offer like Mass Effect. Oil more, for side boobs. More, uh, more RPGs like The Witcher. <laughs> Shit, more RPG, more RPGs like like Cyberpunk. I know, I, I know people hate that game, but guess what? That's a good. That's a cool ass fucking game. <laughs> oh, uh, that's another one. I think I'm going to try Cyberpunk. I was a little afraid with all the backlash and everything, but since just, I got the PS5. Yeah, just wait for the PS5 version. Yeah, I would. I would wait. I played it. I played through the Xbox One version on Series X, and it was it was fine. But I would definitely wait for next gen. Uh, yeah, wait for wait for the PS5 version, or just get the PC version. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, well, actually, get the PC version if you got a decent PC. <laughs> uh, Tales of Arise can... uh, is getting a simultaneous release for the first time. Uh, for the series, uh, Xbox One, Xbox Series, PlayStation Four, PlayStation Five, and PC, 
all Thank those God. places on September 10th. Thank God. Yeah. The Japanese box art is so much better than I know America. it is, dude. That's, Holy that's, hell. I know. I know. For it, for like North America, they were just like, oh, well, let's just take their uh, let's take their idol animations and just slap them on the box. Yeah, yeah. Let's try with the Japanese one. Yeah, it's definitely uh, hmm. yeah. I'm excited, dude. This combat looks so good too. It looks like it looks like action combat is what it looks like. I don't know if it's turn based or not. I don't think it's turn based. I think they're going more action RPG. There's a new director for the first time on this game as well. So. Uh, which is, it, it's time to take the game in a new direction. I'm always excited when people try to take games in a new direction, right? You look at Final yeah. Fantasy 16, right? That's clearly moving away from, you know, the turn-based stuff. I know 15 was kind of like that, and 7 kind of remake moved into that direction too. So, all right, we'll move on. I, I will stop gushing about this trailer as I'm watching it right now. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the next game, I know a couple people, we talked about it earlier in the show, Metal Slug Tactics. This game looks cool, but I want to know why you guys think it's exciting. Dude, dude, it's a tactics game. Come on, get some. It's a tactics game. Okay. <laughs> Not all tactics okay. games are good, Leron. Not all tactics games are good, but Metal Slug... But the, okay, we can appreciate the fact that it's taking one of like SNK's like, like, like favorite like series, and changing the formula and making a tactical style game it's got the classic art style i mean hell if you if you're not a fan of Final fantasy tactics you know then this might not be up your alley you know like me like i'm gonna play i'm gonna play the hell i'm, I'm gonna play the living fuck out of this game <laughs> this is yeah yeah the only thing the only thing the only thing that bugs me though is, is it's released on the pc and i mean like you guys can see my stuff here i have a 49 inch ultra wide monitor the thing is gonna it's gonna be things gonna look all there's gonna be a lot of it's, tactics going on on that screen, Leron. <laughs> it's gonna be all pixelated and everything, like, uh, like you know. But, uh, but I'm, I'm hyped for it. So yes, I want it. Forty nine inches of tactics. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> super ultra wide, baby. <laughs> I don't want to hear about your forty nine inch super ultra wide <laughs> tactics. <laughs> uh, Lamont, why are you excited for this game? Oh. Uh. Uh, Lamont, Laurent pretty much summed everything. The graphics and everything. Um, I was I was actually surprised there was even another Metal Slug game come out because look, the last one was, was there was oh, five. There was wait, there wait. was one what Metal Slug <laughs> XX on that uh, Xbox Live Arcade. I think. I think was. The oh last yeah, one. yeah. I remember that game. I, I haven't had a chance to play that one. Uh, from all the reviews, they said you could skip it. You should just play the old ones. But also, that was yeah. what fifteen years ago at this point. So, <laughs> jeez. Uh, yeah, I I think it looks good. I'm all for a good tactics game. Uh, Logan, Josh, you guys excited for this? You guys want to try it out at all? No. <laughs> Josh, just like y'all are lame. Y'all are lame. Josh, like no, <laughs> pass. Just go, just go, just go find the tallest bridge and take a leap. No, oh, oh, sorry. I play, ga- I play games that look interesting, Laron. Oh. oh, god dang! <laughs> Maybe do the one thing Laron never or Lebron. No, sorry, not Laron. Lebron never does, and I'll pass this one. Mm. <laughs> uh, Laron likes tactics game because he's old and his reflexes are bad. Tell us, Grandpa, how was Age of Empires on the? Oh, you know, it was ninety four. Yeah, hey, you Age guys, of Empires is a great game. I can I can oh, tell no, I can I can tell none of you guys here appreciate a good game of chess. So you know hey, what? Move hey, on. Grandpa, Next how was it when Flight Sim oh, came out for the first time? <laughs> what was it like with TV Switch? You, want, from, uh, you want to know? Right to color. Okay, Josh, you want to know what's stupid about that? I played the. What was it like Flight storming the beaches at Normandy? Okay, you still have oh, a water okay, bed, Grandpa. Oh. <laughs> Oh God! How did this man? This I don't even know what's happening to this show you right know now. What? You know, I, I, I swear I didn't. <laughs> did talk. your I life didn't... change when they made the horse-drawn carriage? <laughs> what was it like to watch Fred's when it originally aired? I didn't. I didn't talk any trash about Elden Ring. I didn't talk any trash about Tiny Tina. And look how y'all do. Yeah, because those are going to be good games. <laughs> going to be phenomenal games. They're going to be at least sixes on IGN's uh, scale. This okay. is lucky to get they will not have too much water. <laughs> yeah. 
Rainbow Six Quarantine cha- changes wow. names. <laughs> Rainbow Six Quarantine changes name. Let's let's do this. All right, we're gonna move on. Uh, so a couple uh, before the pandemic, uh, they announced a Rainbow Six uh, spinoff game called Rainbow Six Quarantine. Uh, it's a three-player cooperative objective-based game. Uh, probably zombies and which is, shooty bang Which bands. was rumored to also have a mobile application to it, too. Yeah. Well, hey, let's just to, not go hey, there. Hey, it's supposed, to have a, it's supposed to have a PS Vita version, too. Yeah. No. No. That was Patriot, I thought. No, uh, no. Back back when it was Yo, called, there, that, back when it was called Rainbow no Six Parasite. There's no way you stop wasting money on Vita. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I love Vita. No. Back when hey, it was th- called Rainbow Six Parasite, like there was, there was, there, people spotted like tech details as saying that there was some, supposed to be some type of PS Vita connectivity. Uh, it's probably, it's probably, it's probably dealing with the PS4 version, but whatever. But obviously, we went into real life quarantine. Some of us did. Some of us still had to go to work for a year, you know. And some change. Uh, and the word quarantine kind of makes people feel sad. So they changed the name to Rainbow Six Extraction. It's still the same style of game. It's still the same uh, uh, premise. They just changed the name. Also, it was pointed out that quarantine and extraction have the same amount of letters, so they didn't really have to adjust the font size. I heard that on a podcast. I don't know if that's true or not. I didn't take the time to count, but... That's all. It, it, anybody here a Rainbow Six fan? Like, I remember playing Vegas and Vegas 2 and really liking them, but Siege is one of those games where you really have to... That's like your game that you play, right? That's just one of those games. I'm sadly locked into Ubisoft. I, I'm just a Ubisoft fanboy. I mean, rarely do I not like something that they make. Um, so... <laughs> You're the reason why they keep putting trash out every year. I, I get it now. It just Whoa. Dance is not games trash. Are... It is wonderful, and it still comes to Wii. Suck it. Not this year. It's not coming to Wii this year. They already Don't said. Break my heart. Don't break my heart. 2020 is the last hey. year Just Dance comes to Wii. I, I, I like Assassin's Creed. I, like... I love Assassin's Creed. I love Steep. Steep is where it's still one of my okay. Steep, you know what a real Ubisoft fan does, Logan? They play Watch Dogs on Wii U. I did that at one point and hated it. I did. um, I did it too. Watch Dogs Legion was up there for Game of the Year for me last year. If Miles Morales hadn't come out and just absolutely destroyed everything, yeah, yeah, that's fair. I I'm too invested Mm -hmm. in the Ubisoft ecosystem. Like we're we're like tomorrow. it's just going to be a huge day for Ubisoft Forward. I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's... I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this game. I probably won't play it. I'm gonna. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I just... I think it's interesting that they changed the name. You know, I don't... I don't know. Maybe it's because I didn't get the full quarantine experience. You know, but... Uh, Lamont, how do you feel about Rainbow Six Extraction? Are you going to check it out? Uh, you know, I really don't know. I'm I'm not even sure. Yeah, I probably will. I because I remember hearing about that story uh, myself, and I don't know. I don't know. I probably will. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I've been I've been trying a lot of uh, franchises lately. Uh, on Twitter, there was a question um, about. Uh, I I think. Celeste like this one. I'm not too sure, but um, there was a, a question on uh, what franchise should you try right now, and I just downloaded uh, Horizon on the PS5. It's a good I'll one. I'll be checking that out. It's a good one. You're gonna like it. Yeah. If you don't yeah, like it, yeah. if you if you don't like it, this is your last episode. It's good to see you. Have a great day. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. Yeah. For real, because. Yeah, for real, because Logan will Logan will show up at your house. He will find you. He he, he will find you. Oh shoot! <laughs> the words of my hero. Uh, also, yeah. you know, you don't understand. You don't understand. I almost lost. I almost lost the rights to be the host of Crossroads the first week of the show. Oh, he about did. First. He about did. <laughs> wow, it was can. It was, can we go on a side tangent here? Why does 
Why does every Ubisoft game have to be called a Ubisoft original now? Why is that a thing? Because you're Why are they trying to, to be stand- fancy here? Why does all the Boss Rush Entertainment stuff has Boss Rush Entertainment stuff in it? Like, I hope that it's the Ubisoft forward colon a Ubisoft original tomorrow. It, it's God, to be. Josh, I hate you so much right now. I hope they do it for the pre-show, too. <laughs> Don't Pre- give him any ideas. I hope... Re- remember when Aisha Tyler used to host them? Those were good. Yes! Oh, yes! No, I really like Aisha Tyler, by the way. Can we yeah, just... me too. Yeah. Whose line? No. Yeah, whose line is it anyway, man? Mm. What a what a gem she is. She needs to do more things. Also, she was really great. This is girlfriend and friends. Also, she's uh the uh she plays some sort of character in uh the Santa Claus three. The worst of the Santa Claus oh, trilogy. She makes uh, no. She is the uh, she's fairy godmother. Yeah, she's fairy godmother. Oh, real. Yeah. Shout out to Aisha Tyler. You're invited on the show anytime. Yeah. Also, don't watch this episode in particular. Check out one of our le- more tame <laughs> episodes. <laughs> don't listen to the pre-show either if you're watching this. This. this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The pre-show. Uh, yeah, I kind of embarrassed myself on the pre-show. I mean, <laughs> you didn't tell the story about the duck and the jer- and it- Never mind. That 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 is true. I did I did I did say something about domestic violence. You did violence. tell it the apology joke. <laughs> okay, okay. Everybody was worse than me. All right, all right. Rainbow Six Extraction. Uh, see more during the Ubisoft Forward, a Ubisoft original. Uh, we will probably talk a little bit more about that. What tomorrow? Is that when Ubisoft yeah, is it's tomorrow? Yeah. It's is tomorrow today tomorrow Friday? Ubisoft. Today Jesus is Friday. Christ. Today is Friday. Oh. God. Uh, I'm fr- so glad we, I am so glad we made it to the weekend. Jeez. We did. Some of us did. <sighs> Some of us did. Man. Uh <laughs> speaking of weekends, there's a beta coming for Back for Blood, the Turtle Rock Studios developed game in the in the wake of uh Left for Dead and Left for Dead 2. Uh, this game looks really cool. It's bringing back all those vibes. Um, how do we feel about Back for Blood? It looks just, it looks like, a, it looks like Left 4 Dead, but, you know, new. How's everybody feel? Um, I, I was hyped for it with the, um, with the initial, uh, trailer back in, um, but who's, uh, whose show was that? I can't remember whose show it was when they, when they made the announcement. It wasn't a, it wasn't a Sony show. Whose show was it? Uh, I don't know. I feel like it was some... Back for Blood? Yeah. Yeah. I think they just announced it. I want to say it was the Game Awards. Was it? Was it? Yeah, it was the Game yeah. Awards. It was. Game it Awards. was. Yeah. I don't know. It looks cool. Uh, wouldn't mind some community game nights yeah. for Back for Blood in the in the near future. Josh, how do you feel about Back for Blood? I mean, I could take it or leave it. My enthusiasm for zombie games is just at an all-time low at this point. Um, and I... If had this come out 10 years ago as Left 4 Dead 3, I would have cared a lot more. Yeah. Um, but I was already late to the Left 4 Dead train. And I don't know. In high school, it was fun to play because we'd all get together and we'd have multiplayer nights like every single Friday. Yeah. Uh, and it was a rotating selection of Halo, Rock Band, and uh, Back for Blood. But... Or not back for blood. <laughs> uh, left for dead. Yeah. So I'll play this. I've heard great things from the people who played the alpha um, earlier this year. They really, really enjoyed it. And I mean, I'll pro- I'll check out the beta at the very least. But I can't see myself dropping money on another multiplayer game this fall. And th- this is the problem I'm running into because I'm already going to be playing Halo. I play a lot of Destiny. I I don't. I'm going to be playing Forza when it inevitably comes out. I cannot see myself investing in a fourth or even fifth multiplayer game because yeah. Battlefield would take priority for me over this. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I feel like this game's really going to get lost in the shuffle, and I'm, I feel bad for him. Is, I feel, man, I don't know. I feel like it has this... an audience, but again, I think it's going to be one of those games like people are going to buy it. We're going to all rave about it for about five days, and then we're going to move on to the next. I, I think you're giving it too long. I think it's going to get an okay reception from like the review. I think the reviews are going to kill this game. 
There is, but there's a very dedicated community that's wanted a third Left for Dead for so Pol- long now. Polygon's yeah. gonna yeah. be the o- Polygon's gonna be the only one that gives this even like a decent review. Everybody else is going to say this is too childish. Like, there's no, there's this is there isn't a place for this kind of game anymore. Do you really? Do you really feel that? I really do. I mean, I re- look Left for Dead Two. Yeah, it had a good reception to it, but man. With as much time has passed, I think the people who were cute, like, like let, let's think about it. When when did Left 4 Dead 2 come out? What, 2012? 13? I don't, I honestly don't even know. I think it was like 2010. Man, 2010, Man, yeah. Like, Man, I just, I think too much time has passed for people to really give a crap about this series. Man, Logan, why are you kicking everybody's puppy right now? Jeez. Yeah, Logan, gosh. <laughs> puppy I'm, kicker. Call me. Call me Jack Black and Anchorman because I'm just pumping back, punting Baxter off the roof. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! All right, final classic words film on by the blood. way. Classic film, Anchorman. <laughs> they ruined it by making a sequel. That's true. That is true. That's dude. The second movie sucked so bad. Oh. So sad that that movie was bad because I wanted the second it so one has bad. some pretty great moments though. It saw some really funny moments. Mm. Mm, not sure. I'm not sure. All right, we're going to move on. So I feel like Microsoft made some sort of weird surprise appearance here, even though they have their own showcase that's 90 minutes long. Uh, talking about their the future of Xbox and Game Pass and cloud streaming and stuff, uh, Satya Nadella came on with Phil Spencer and talked about how dedicated Microsoft was to gaming and uh, kind of talked about moving away. They, it kind of said that they were kind of moving away from hardware and obviously they're working with uh, TV manufacturers to get the Game Pass app on the TVs uh, where all you need is a controller and, and Game Pass subscription and you can stream games to your smart TV, which I think is really smart. Obviously, mm-hmm. we're getting it on, we have it on phones and uh, iOS browser based stuff, which is not great at recognizing controllers at this point at least for me. Uh, so I don't know. I, I thought that Xbox showing up was a nice surprise. And, you know, Josh, we talk about this often of how Xbox is kind of changing the way we think about games and the cloud stuff is really interesting to have. And as a, as an option for players who aren't right next to their box, but they're really moving more towards uh, ecosystem expansion and uh, focusing less on hardware. I mean, yeah, I've been beating this drum for about five or six years now, um, ever since we first started getting the rumblings of xCloud's, you know, very, very, very early primitive form uh, back at, I think it was Gamescom 2015. Uh, they had Halo 4 running on a phone because um, IGN, I remember, was talking about and they were talking about how, like, cloud tech was going to be helping them with um, crackdowns at that point, that iteration of crackdown with its... Uh, scaling and its destructible environments and things like that Mm -hmm. and i was was fascinated by that but this is the next logical expansion we all knew they were going to come to smart tvs phil spencer's made no secret about that but i think getting uh sag and aiella out here was a huge deal Mm -hmm. um i mean in in that awesome halo hoodie nonetheless i know dude i was Uh, dude that halo hoodie was so cool i'm waiting for that hoodie to go on sale i want I think it was a big deal because Phil Spencer really had to convince him that Xbox yeah. was worth saving, right? Like it, it, when he, he did, and then uh, Nadella was convinced, and uh, you'll you'll never get me to stop believing this that when he was pitched the idea of cloud gaming is likely what saved the Xbox brand being a part of Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Um, but they want to bring it to smart TVs. It's definitely it's going to come to LG and Samsung first. Those are their official partners worldwide. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had the exact opposite experience of you with xCloud. Like, I, I've had a great experience in the browser. I play Destiny on it. It is a little rough uh, with things being at 30 frames right now. Mm-hmm. But they could, the other thing they confirmed during all this is the server blades are almost done being upgraded from Xbox One to Series X. Mm-hmm. So you're going to see improvements drastically uh, in terms of performance. Uh, to the, Before you move on, Josh, the, yeah. my browser stuff I'm talking about is through my phone it works yeah. on my laptop fine that's crazy yeah what what browser are you using in particular i tried safari and i tried chrome i've had no problems with safari believe it or not i can't even get i can't even get it to load in safari 
That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, it might. I don't know if it's your connection or what. Oh, I, uh, I tried it on LTE. I tried it on my connection. Hmm. I tried it on other Wi-Fi. It's just. It's just. I just. I play it on wi- two bars of Wi-Fi, and it's just been a smooth experience for me. Like outside of a couple of hiccups when it first came uh, to browsers, mm-hmm. it's been smooth sailing for me. Maybe I'll uh, give it another shot. Convert- it's been yeah. a co- it's been a I would say wait for it to get out of beta. It's yeah. about to leave beta. Yeah. Um, I have a feeling they'll announce a proper launch date um, at E3, and then beyond that, I mean, they confirm hardware is still the future. Mm-hmm. They're they're still going to keep making Xbox hardware. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're working on the next iteration of it right now, which I suspect is just a much more compact Series X. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you, know, you and I have both been pretty open in our belief that the Series S is a bridge console. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's there for right now, but eventually they want the Series X to be that sized. Mm-hmm. Uh, as components become cheaper, and obviously, you know, semiconductor shortages are going to lead to this generation being prolonged beyond what we expected it. Um, but I'm, man, I'm, I'm really excited about the future. You know, they, they said, you know, they're still looking at acquisitions, which I'm going to tell you, like, Microsoft's got to cool it on that. Um, I think it was fine when you were getting a bunch of studios that were in danger of going under or going out or that people had never heard of. I mean, when In Exile and Undead Labs got acquired, people were like, okay, like, well, who gives a shit? But then you see them pick up a Double Fine, an Obsidian, a Ninja Theory. Like, I don't think everybody understands, like, how much the studios they've acquired outside of the Bethesda purchase really were struggling financially. Yeah. Double Fine was crowdfunding from multiple sources for Psychonauts 2. Yeah. Uh, Ninja Theory has never made a profitable game, apparently. Like, until Hellblade, they had never made a profitable game. Yeah. Even that, like, they invested so much into that game, and it's because they had such a small team that it was even able to be profitable. Obsidian, yeah. same thing. Pillars of Eternity, things like that. Then you have Bethesda. Bethesda's obviously the big name one. They added, like, six, seven studios with that, even more teams. You, you got to kind of cool with that talk, though, I think. Like, I understand why you're making those. Like, you want to stay competitive. Like, you're finally at the level of talent and pedigree to compete with the Sony and Nintendo first party studios. I mean, it's not even just that it's managing all these studios. How do you manage all these studios? You know? So, and that, that's the thing is from my understanding, Pete Hines is overseeing everything from Zenimax and Matt Booty is continuing to oversee everything that was already existing as part of the company. Right. Um, I suspect that if they acquire anything else, Sarah Bond will take over that. Yeah, that she will see oversee anything else that they might have. She's their uh, third per- third party liaison kind of right yeah. now, doing a lot of game pass. Like without her, game pass is not a thing. Right. Uh, so she's one of the most powerful women in gaming. Like I fully expect her to take on a much more visible role at Microsoft going forward. Yeah. There's a reason why she is featured in so much these days. Yeah. Uh, with them, so uh, nothing but good news over there, though. I mean, the tech stuff is real interesting. Um, I, I find their whole approach to this, not just Game Pass, but cloud gaming in general to be really fascinating, because it feels like they're about two, maybe three years early based on how American ISPs operate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest obstacle to this. Like, it may come to smart TVs, but you gotta think, like, the people who have smart TVs are probably the ones who already have an Xbox or who will buy one in the future. Dude, I, I, smart app, the apps on the smart TV don't even load properly. No. <laughs> yeah. And that's well, the thing. Well, you know is... what? Uh, I said this, um, I said this back on, um, on an episode of Arsenal X when, when we were all on there, uh, you, me, uh, you, me, and, uh, Corey, Josh, mm-hmm. uh, that Microsoft does one thing very well. Like, they make sure that, tech changes the entire infrastructure we thought we thought they were freaking insane when they were like oh the xbox the the xbox uh 360 is going to be always online and you have to have a good internet connection shit they basically they basically kick-started broadband for the united states they not only kick-started that but i mean like look at your xbox or your playstation now how often do you really disconnect it from the internet I don't. I just shit. The damn thing. You don't be because you can't really play your digital games offline. Oh, well, I was going to say all of that. I was going to say my damn PS5 woke me up last night because it was preloading something. I just realized it just it installed the updates to Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's one of those things. Like, so, you know, one of the things that I've always tried to drill home is that they're, they're a software company first and foremost. There's a reason why Windows has just completely dwarfed Mac OS. 
right? Mm-hmm. And it's because it's easy to use, it's accessible. Like I'm a Mac guy, but there's no denying like Windows is just dominance in that area. There's a reason why we use Office for damn near everything. Like Outlook is used by so many companies. Like Microsoft has a way of setting that standard. Now the problem is you become complacent like that. And yeah. I think that Microsoft as a company has like really started to like kind of turn that corner the last couple of years under uh, Nadella's leadership. Under Balmer, they really didn't take those chances anymore. But he's kind of getting back to that original Gates philosophy. And I think that trickles down like into the gaming division. Like gaming makes up such a small portion of Microsoft's revenue, but it's still enough that they're willing to invest billions upon billions into this to make it work. Like if the Bethesda deal fails, which I don't see how it does at this point, but like if Series X, they, they've already said like they don't care about being number one. If they're not at least competitive this time, though, you got to think they have one more console cycle on them before the owner or before Nadella or whoever comes after him as CEO finally goes, we got to sell you guys off. Y'all, y'all are an albatross. Like maybe it's we need new leadership. Like we are now in the phase of all right, Phil has been installed for enough years, enough of his projects are coming to fruition between Game Pass, xCloud, the studio acquisitions. It's time to show us, were you really being an effective leader behind the scenes or not? It's great that you're a figurehead for the industry. It's great that you're being, you know, not a Miyamoto because you're not a creative guy, but you're kind of taking that, uh, the Reggie role or the Sean Layden role. Like Xbox finally has a guy like that. They haven't had one since Peter Moore. Mm-hmm. You finally yeah. have someone who is the face of your company. And he's a damn good face. He's great for the industry and this and that. But are you being an effective leader at Microsoft? And I think that's what the next 12 months are really going to tell us. This blog post and this video were a really good intro to that. They had a whole hour long thing that was released to journalists uh, that is confidential that we have not been able to see. The speculation is there's a lot of stuff in there that will be addressed at E3 or in the coming weeks. I can't. I, I can't wait. I can't wait to see what it is. Like I'm so optimistic and so excited for all three of the big consoles right now. Like Xbox has finally put all its pieces on the table. Mm-hmm. Now we see if they can actually execute. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm. I'm really excited for. I, I mean, this is the most excited I've been for Xbox. Yeah. Ever, I think. You know, it's it's reaching a fever pitch. Like we've gone so many years without quality exclusives. I mean, the last uh, Orient of Wolf Wisps, obviously great. Gears Tactics, great. But when's the last time we had a major AAA exclusive? I mean, Gears Five, I guess. Gears right? Five, almost two years ago. Crackdown Damn. Three. God, now <laughs> you've got you know you've got Halo, you've got Forza, you got Psychonauts, you got those coming out this year, and those are you know, being made by your internal teams. And then I mean, looking ahead, you know, Starfield, Avowed, like all these, like. All right, you're trying to clearly make it that we know that you are you are trying to be the home for multiplayer gaming and Western RPGs. That's what you made your name on in the Xbox and in the 360 eras, and you got away from it this last time. Bring it back home, like mm-hmm. bringing it back to what you've been good at for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll see in about 48 hours if they actually do it or not. Yeah. God, 48 hours. <laughs> this is good, that dude. <laughs> I'm if so, we don't all die before then. Dude, I'm so excited and terrified of Sunday night how long this good conversation's going to be, Josh. It's going to be good. It's it going to be good. I'm excited. It is. Uh, well, I, we talked a lot. Anybody else have anything else to say about Xbox and moving away from consoles and streaming? and I don't know. Xbox. The only way the Bethesda deal fails is if Elder Scrolls 6 bombs. Well, do I it's have not happening? Do it's I have not, news for you, not. buddy? Is the most one of okay. the most profitable cash cows in all of video game history going to fail? Yeah. Hey, now, if Elder Scrolls no, if Elder Scrolls Six fails, they'll just re-release Skyrim and everybody will be happy. Well, uh, that was actually really so tired of that meme. You can tell Todd Josh, Howard is too. <laughs> Josh, re- getting hey, a remastered version of Skyrim for PS5 and Xbox Series X. Uh, Series X, no, because we already have the auto HDR and the 60 frames upgrade for the console baked in. Mm-hmm. Um, I would not be shocked to see them announce one for PS5, but I think they would go the PC. path of it'll be a free upgrade. Um, 
or hey, you know, we have it on sale so much, like here, twenty bucks, like twenty bucks if you don't already own it somehow, or oh. we'll throw it to the PS Plus collection or whatever. Like you got to think Microsoft wants to like extract another million or two copies. Like it sold thirty five million copies. What's another one or two at this point? Right. Like. Uh, death taxes Skyrim. Three inevitabilities in life. <laughs> well, if we know anything about gaming culture, like gamers eat this shit up. They, they, they like let like you know like uh, like a triple A of the triple A titles like gets re released. Like they're gonna buy it. I mean, hell, look, look at, at Mass me. Effect. Look, I was about to say, yeah. look at all, look at all of us who flocked and bought Mass Effect. Look at all of us. I mean, not even that. Like, look at all of us who beat Skyrim on the 360 or the PS3, and then the second they announced the Xbox One and PS4 versions, we ran and bought it. They announced the Switch version. I ran and bought it. They got me with three cosmetic items. I bought the whole game again. Okay, that's a little too much. That's a little too much. And the sword. God, I'm as bad as Laron with Monster Hunter. Right? I'm, I'm, fum- it's I'm embarrassing at, at a certain point. I'm foaming at the mouth right now, hearing more and more of these rumors about Dead Space trilogy uh, fucking remaster coming. I'm, I'm starting to drink that Kool Aid. Uh, wow. Let me have it. Okay, that's new to me. <laughs> oh, you didn't know that? Oh, I didn't know that until two days ago. Yeah, they, they there's been a rumor stirring up that. Dead Space is going to be the next trilogy that's remastered from EA. It's, it's a yeah, rumor. It's gonna, I don't know yeah, if that just. I don't know if that just spurred out of like, oh, Mass Effect is such a huge hit, and Dead Space yep. is also a trilogy, so let's remaster it. You know what I mean? Well, so. I got I got I got to find it, but uh, but it's it was a Twitter thread that was started from like two two gaming insiders, and you know, like two credible ones. Mm-hmm. You know, not not like the same insider has been talking about the Switch Pro for like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! If that Switch Pro doesn't happen this year, it's not happening. That's all I the say. only reason I believe the latest one was because um, Takashi over at Bloomberg published it, mm-hmm. and when he publishes something, uh, I tend to pay attention, especially when it comes to like hardware. Uh, he seems to be the only person who actually knows what's going on with hardware, and he very specifically stayed away from promising a date. Just. It's gonna happen in the next couple of weeks. Oh, who? Yeah. Oh, who said? Who said Nintendo was gonna pre-announce like their like like the Switch Pro before before E three started? Because uh, uh, Emily Rogers said yeah. it. Uh, there were a few other people. A lot of YouTubers y- really jumped on that. Yeah, because your y'all's asses were wrong. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, Takashi he he published his after all that was like yeah no it's not it, like it may happen before E three. He was like he literally said I wouldn't be surprised, but I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, like. I, st- I personally still I'll think it's be- getting announced, but there's no way they were showing that without Breath of the Wild. Yeah. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. They won't show until after E3 is over. Mm, we'll see. We'll see on Tuesday. They see, won't. They I, won't. I feel like they might. If they were going to do it, I wonder if they would do it on Monday night. Just drop I mean, a trailer for N- it. Nintendo is just so fucking weird with how they do things. They they Dude, literally man. like they they revealed the Switch at midnight. It's true. Like, <laughs> it's entirely possible to go. Oh well, it's Tuesday in Japan. Let's announce it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's 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 funny. It's funny they dropped the reveal for the Switch on midnight when they can't even get like pre-release games ready to go at midnight or at twelve oh one a.m. All I'm gonna say is I'm glad they did it at midnight. That was before we expected these things because I got my pre-order in so easy. <laughs> I know. God, As I'm opposed so... to announcing pre-orders are going live at eleven a.m. And then yeah, they sold out like for the whole 12 world. seconds later. Thanks, guys. Oh. Dude, I was so scared I wasn't going to get the Switch pre-order. <laughs> I was like, man. I've never seen Logan so bored in my life as we're talking about the Switch. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> my defense, I did just finish an article and wrote some other stuff. So like, oh, my God. Look this at this guy, guy being productive this, during the show. This guy, is, this guy is not taking his podcasting duties seriously. I know. That's why. That's why we let him talk about you know baseball and. I I, don't know. I am I'm totally taking it seriously. It's just not anything that I'm an expert on or can really talk about. You wrote a you wrote a whole freaking article. I was trying to I was trying to figure out what I'm doing on my date tomorrow. God. <laughs> I said a bang. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. The last G, I did, I do my part. I add Where, my part to the show. Okay? We, I'm here for comic relief. Uh, <laughs> how I Met Your Mother, Q-List. Check it out. It's a thing. You, you set yep, me up for check a it out. plug. All right. 
what's where, where, wait where's our where's our, right, our, next la- topic? our 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 last kind of gaming related uh summer games fest thing that we're going to talk about before we get into uh netflix geeked week uh josh you actually brought this to my attention uh x call of duty black ops devs are making a brand new ip for playstation uh ron you should copy this article and talk about it on crossroads next week it's gonna if you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, uh, no, no. no, no. We were talking was, about this one no, yesterday. No pressure. No, it was, we're both pretty excited to see what happens. Oh, no, no, no. It was, no, it, it was planned. As a matter of fact, I want to say that Crossroads is probably the first show that started pulling stuff directly from the Boss Rush Games website mm-hmm. uh, and featuring them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Shoot. Corey, uh, Corey, just last week, one of your articles was mentioned on the show. No, not last week. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, two weeks ago. Two weeks Mine? ago. I haven't written yeah, any articles in a while. Yeah, I, I I had to dredge it up through the archive. Oh, well, <laughs> it was re- it, no, it was relevant to another article. <laughs> I gotta go back to it. Oh crap! I've already changed the notes. Like, mm. all right. Well, once, while, once you on, while you put on while you put on your bifocals, I'm gonna talk about this article here. Uh, so the former <laughs> former Call of Duty devs uh, formed Deviation Games, uh, and was set up by CEO Dave Anthony and director Jason Blundell, both who worked on on Call of Duty at Treyarch. Uh, Blundell was the chief creative officer of Call of Duty's uh, popular Zombies mode and left Treyarch in 2020 after 13 years. Uh, long story short, they signed a deal with PlayStation to make them a cool game. Josh, since you brought this to my attention, I'm going to you first. What do you think? What do you think this game's going to be? I mean, they. I feel like it's, it's going to be a new multiplayer IP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's going to at least be a game with a really strong multiplayer focus. They said they already have over a hundred devs working on this game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was talking to Logan about this yesterday when it first got revealed. We both got really excited about it. And I think this is part of the larger Sony strategy, which is partnering with new co- brand new companies for yeah, brand like new Haven. IPs. Like yeah, yeah they have the Jay Raymond studio. They've got the uh, studio from the uh, the X Bungie devs. I forget what it's called, but they're making a new uh, multiplayer focused game exclusive for PlayStation Five. Yeah. Partner with studios who can do things, who have a history and a pedigree of doing things that maybe you yourself are not great at. Um, I would say as much as I love the PlayStation 5 lineup, uh, and I've said this before, one of the things that I feel is lacking, like just like I think Xbox really sorely needs those single player story driven games, Sony desperately needs some really good multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And if these studios, if two of these three studios can deliver that, that's awesome. Yeah. Like the, the whole goal is to bring in people who wouldn't normally play your stuff. Like I know a lot of people who play multiplayer games and they exclusively have an Xbox, but like they're intrigued in the story stuff, but they're like, "Oh, we don't really play for stories. We play to hang out with our friends." If you put out, start putting out some quality multiplayer games over there that are exclusive, not even from your internal studios, people will come. That's they true. will come to that, and this, like, this excites me. These are guys who were clearly confident enough to go start their own studio. The last time we saw that with Call of Duty devs, we got Titanfall and Apex out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and then Jedi Fallen Order. So, like, who knows where these? Who knows where this studio is going to be at in do a th- decade? Do you think they could pull yeah. one of Sony's IP that they own already? Like, do you think they could be making a SOCOM game? Like that. I that was my first SOCOM thought. Has long passed. I yeah. I feel like I feel like SOCOM's going to be one of those. Logan, because... Logan has his hand up. I Don't have look. a I have a dumb theory, but follow me on this. I have a dumb. Both of those guys that. also have ties to another company called Insomniac. And what does Insomniac have right now that we assume is going to get announced within the next month or two? But we don't have actual confirmation of what if they're part of the development team for Sunset Overdrive Two. Uh, you said in some. You said in some. Adding you, more be sure. Like stop, 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 stop. stop. You, Sun, you said, Sunset you Overdrive said isn't coming anytime soon, especially with said, the success of Ratchet what? and Clank and Spider Man, which is why this makes sense. Well, you bring well, well, deviation well. to add more of a shooter element to Sunset Overdrive Two. It could Logan, Logan, Logan. <laughs> you, you're talking insomniac games here. Just bring back Resistance Fall of Man. I don't disagree with you, but I'm thinking, and I look. I, I've said it on Josh. Each looks of like the he needs another bourbon. 
No, I, I can't. I literally cannot drink anymore. <laughs> if I drink anymore, my words are going to start getting real slurred, and that's going to be a problem for all of us. Wait, I'm already jump. getting over anime. <laughs> you, you get the job he's gonna, on me. He's going. He's going to start. Okay. He's going to start selling like Bobcat Goldthwait. <laughs> In all serious though, in all seriousness though, I, I do love deviation coming on to Sony. I think this is a great opportunity. My issue with this, but the, but these guys addressed it in in their little blurb yesterday was they have seen how the machine runs. They know the practices and standards that Sony is going to require. That is something that was a struggle on the two versions of Black Ops that they made. Black Ops 3 had a rough launch. Black Ops 2 had a very rough launch. Um, so if Sony can fine-tune these guys and say, hey, double-check your facts, slow down, make sure this game's 100% before launch, look, this whatever these guys make, whether it be Sunset Overdrive 2 or be a fresh new IP, which I wouldn't be opposed to either, um, I'm 100% in for this. I mean, or, I, or really I, I genuinely love... I generally love the games these guys have made. I know they're I know they're not the biggest fan favorites in the Call of Duty world, but I still love them. I, I still I'm still I think I'm team new IP. Um, yeah. I think Sony's I left too. behind I the IPs too. that they have for a reason. Like I don't I don't doubt that Sunset will have something done with it eventually. Um, I just I don't think you have a hundred person team that it's two guys that are known for doing like good, really good multiplayer. And have them do Sunset Overdrive. Well, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm not saying that they would be the primary on it. I, yeah. I'm just assuming that they would assist on that. Like they would help add okay. a shooter element, a sh- more of a shooter element. Obviously, Insomniac, if they were going to do Sunset Overdrive two, would be the focal uh, team on that. I'm just saying, like, especially with how, like, Josh, you and I talked about this the other day too, mm-hmm. of how. You know, with Xbox, all these different companies are sharing ideas and they're sharing practices and yeah. different cool things. And I think Sony's trying to build something similar. I think Sony's trying to expand that with, hey, Insomniac, work with Deviation on this. Or Deviation, think, we need we need a little bit of help on this. My, that, my only concern with it is, uh, not to cut you off, my only concern with that is Deviation is not an actual Sony studio. They're partnering with Sony. Right. So that's my only thing. Sony tends to really like to keep things in house, like Insomniac's partnership being like the one that they were like different on because that was such a tight knit relationship with Ratchet and Clank for so long. You know, Spyro uh, into Ratchet and Clank, and then you know we saw Insomniac, you know, go multi plat. So Sony got that exclusivity, and like now, like oh okay, here you go, like you can draw from everything, everything you want to, like, but, you know, with the the new reality gun and things like that, and Rift Apart. But like, like we have something. to assume that Deviation's capital came from Sony, right? Because nobody else could fund them. At least, I, I mean, I, I know that I they mean, did. Sony's I, funding the game. I don't think Sony set the studio up though. Yeah. If it, if this was a new first party studio, they would have made that explicitly clear. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. That that's my only takeaway is that this this announcement felt and read a lot like a Haven and like the uh, the Bungie. God, I really wish I could remember that other studio's name. It really read a lot like those two, where they were like, "These are not first party studios; they are partnering with us for their first game." Though, yeah. So, I don't uh, know, like, I wouldn't be shocked to see any of these studios become first party studios down the line. Yeah. Um. That that. Uh, oh my gosh. This ad, why is this ad so big? Uh, the studio, the ex Bungie studio, is called Firewalk Studios. Firewalk. Yes. Okay. yes. Firewalk. I keep wanting to call them Firewatch, and I know that's not right because that's the name of a game. Yeah. Yeah. Is this? Are they? Are they the studio that's making that Scavengers game? Is that what that is? Mm-mm. We don't yeah. know what they're making. Yeah, we don't know what they're making yet. Who made that Scavenger? Uh, whatever. It's a conversation for a different day. Uh. Lamont, Laron, you guys interested in this, in in seeing what they're gonna make? I'm I'm interested in seeing what they're gonna make. I just have no idea what they're gonna make. And Logan and Logan spun a nice little conspiracy theory there, but uh, mm. Ed's not here. Somebody has to do the hot <laughs> take. Oh no, and no, because Ed, I... Ed would because Ed, Ed would have been like, oh, they're making the next uh, uh, super, uh, Paper Mario. It's gonna be Super Paper Mario, whatever you know, and then. I... But super Laron, paper sack I, boy or something. Laron, I feel the fire within, okay? You know, I can... <laughs> You're not quite there, Logan. Give it a couple of years. You'll be, you'll get there. My digestive I, I system mean, might be I right mean, we, I mean, we're throwing, we're, we're throwing just wild scenarios out here. They need to make Dead Space 4. <laughs> God. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, like snacks too. Give it to me. Yeah, yeah. I I'm really looking forward to this uh, new IP. I'm hoping there's something a little bit like deviation, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely looking forward to it. All right, guys. <laughs> uh, that's that's all the games announcements. Uh, do we want to? Anybody need to take a quick break, or does uh, you know? Oh, like do we? Do we? Yeah, we did. It's cool. He's smiling on screen though, so it's fine. Yeah. Uh, um. Uh. It, it's up. It's up to you guys. Like I, this next segment, I don't think I can really like add to it because I didn't see any of this stuff. That I we're mean, about we to could ju- we could just kind of fly through Geek Week and just talk about what excites us. Because uh, I know Josh just, just hit. Oh, hit, then, hit, oh, then, hit, then hit those things. bullet points. Yeah. Oh, Witcher means, season two has a great cast. That's all you need to know. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, um, I mean, I can just pull stuff out my ass, and if we're gonna do it like that. All right. So okay. So I, I know. The Resident Evil casting is a. It, we'll talk. We'll talk about the Resident Evil. What it's. it's what is it? A series, right? Yeah, uh, series. They, they have a really interesting cast. Uh, Lance Reddick, the voice yes. of Commander Zavala, the man, the myth, the legend, has been cast also as sil- also Albert. Silence. He's Sir, ca- that's Captain Cedric Daniels. Thank you very much. Mm. That is the dude from the free credit report dot com ads. Mm. God, I hate you, you know what though? You. you know what though? The more I think about it, though, like Lance, Re- you know, the more I think about the, the uh, Lance Reddy being cast uh, cast as Wesker. Like, I mean, like his the the way he the way he is an, as an actor, he has the voice, the style, the mannerisms that would fit like an Albert Wesker. So I'm, I'm especially here for an it. older Wesker, right? Because this stars his yeah. daughters. This the series follows his daughters, right? Like that's yes. the, the premise of the show. Yeah. So yeah, I could definitely see it. Uh, it's cool though, jo- Josh. I just yeah. the DMs. Josh sent me. He just says, "Lance Reddick is in Resident Evil." So. I was so excited. That's the one announcement that I got to see today while I was out and about because I had so I had like three different people send it to me, be like, "Dude, Zavala's in Resident Evil." And I'm like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> and then I saw that he was Wesker, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is awesome." <laughs> uh yeah it's it's cool it's 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 it, it it has piqued my interest i don't really care about resident evil really mm-hmm. at all but put lance reddick in something guys you just put him in there i will i will attempt to watch it uh well uh question for you then um no, no questions cons- please save your questions cons- for the end of the show <sighs> Constantine film is behind it, though, and uh, I gotta say, there's a connection to the Resident Evil movie franchise. Uh, well, does that does that change your thoughts on it? I mean, I only saw the first Resident Evil movie, and it was pretty bad. So, um, look, I I have low expectations based on video game stuff anyway. That is turned into other forms of media. So, yeah, uh, my bar is pretty low. But you put Lance Reddick in something. I'm in. I will attempt to watch it. I will stand is, by that statement. He is such freaking rage, dude. I mean, the guy's just insane. Lance Reddick, there's a third chair open on Tower Casuals. Anytime you want it, you can just pop right in and you know, narr- you can you can take over lore corner for Josh and just narrate the lore as. Hold on, uh, hold, hold on. Resident Evil was excuse a, me. Resident Evil was ir- originally a PlayStation exclusive. Uh, he he gets first. Crossroads gets first dibs. In. No, uh, I'm sorry. Yes. It's a TV show. Boss Rush Entertainment has first dibs. <laughs> um, Lance Reddick literally plays Commander Zavala. Tower Casuals has first dibs. Josh, uh, he plays. Hold on, Josh, Silence. Will you in Horizon Zero Dawn? I think I have Josh. I think I have priority. Will you, will will you have a a lore off with with Lance Reddick on Tower Casuals? Dude, if Lance Reddick ever came on our show, I wouldn't be able to talk because I'd be crying the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that sweet, sultry voice. I love it whenever he tweets out, and he he tweets out little like selfie videos. And it's hilarious because he he was recording all his dialogue for uh, Beyond Light and for the uh, last couple seasons in his closet at home. Yeah, and he would post a video. And be like, "Hey guys, Lance here." Get ready to record some dialogue for Destiny, and he like gets really into it. And it's hilarious because <laughs> like he like emphasizes certain like 
uh, pronunciations and words, and it's like he's trying to be goofy, and he like stares into the camera with like gigantic eyes. And it just, it makes me so happy whenever I see him post a video, because sometimes it's just, like, him, like, chilling, like, with his dog on the couch, like, playing Destiny, like, he's, like, talking to his wife off screen, and he goes back to play, and it's like, oh, hey, cool, By the he way, plays, my, not as a titan, but he plays. My only gripe about watching him play Destiny, he has this huge TV, this really nice TV, and he's playing Destiny on a base PS4. And it really makes me sad. You're nobody can send Bungie this man a PS5. Or, yeah, like, nobody can send him, like, a better console. It's Lance Reddick. <laughs> he's, he's been in Horizon. He's in Horizon Forbidden West. And he's a major part of Destiny. None of these studios could get the man a PlayStation, at least a PS4 Pro. Right. Jeez. Oh, he's still playing Destiny at 30 frames a second. Oh. Netflix is going to be the one to give him a PS5 first. This man deserves more. I will yes. give him my Series S. Not my I will not. I've, I waited for that. So I will not. I love you, Lance. You're not getting my Xbox. <laughs> uh, also, an inspired casting. Uh, the Cuphead show has cast Wayne Brady as uh, what? King Dice? King Dice. Mm-hmm. So that's neat. Low key, great casting. Uh, I mean, this show is just kind of like a based off of like old cartoons right like the like the yeah. like the game right i mean what did they what did they call that animation style though they called it disney like, to disney 1.0 no hmm. it's not that like racist. the, like uh, the no, no no like i'm like th- that was the same style disney was originally no in. i know uh, but I'm, not not the cuphead art style the, no, the like art the actual, style they're like using the for the style. show yeah. Oh, it's, my bad. My I forget what they called it. They called it like apologies. digital freehand or something. I don't remember what they called it, but uh, I don't know. It, it, I, wait, I, I'll well, watch well, it. Well, being being technical, being technical about it, uh, the the style of animation used in cartoons from the golden age was called rubber hose style. Yeah, you're a rubber hose. Uh, what kind of show do we think this is going to be? Is it going to be for adults? Is it going to be for kids? Is it going to have dirty jokes? It's going to be. Gonna, it's going to have a lot it's of. Gonna be it's going to be for adults. It's going to be for adults. Mm. I'm very excited for this. Okay. Though. This is something I will 100% watch. Yeah. By the way, uh, TNT in the chat says if you if you could have Lance Reddick or Keith David on a podcast, who would you pick? Oh, Lance, Lance Reddick. Reddick. Lance. Reddick. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with Keith David. Mm, it's because you're older than us. I don't What's know. That <laughs> That's my excuse for everything. When you're significantly is different. older than us. <laughs> whoa, whoa, uh, whoa, sir. <laughs> No, uh, I don't. I don't like the way this this whole. But I mean, like, the, that's the problem. Drive though, is, like, when I was born, you're significantly older. Here, here, here's here's the problem. Like, I I like Keith David because I mean he has a connection to my favorite video game franchise ever. He's the arbiter in Halo. It's true. But Lance Reddick has been my tower commander for seven years now. Yeah, yeah. He's a different level of god. <sighs> he was also in The Wire. Yo, so I feel yo. like that automatically like gives you more like street yo, cred. Shut the shut the hell up. He's Admiral Anderson from Mass Effect. Shut the hell up. That's true too. Again, he's silent. The 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 guy oh. at the beginning. That the, tells, the black tells guy. You. The black guy that gave you all the orders throughout the whole series. Dude, I have played. I played Mass Effect one 13 years ago, and I've not touched the franchise since. I don't remember these people. I have slept a lot and drank even more since then. It, it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like you have a you have a very bad deficiency there, brother, and you need to fix it. I'm good. <laughs> uh, wow. Okay. So uh, a few more TV shows were also announced. Uh, they're making a an anime inspired Far Cry Blood Dragon show, a Splinter Cell show, and ending one Castlevania show to start another Castlevania show. I'm very excited about the Castlevania one. Uh, it's the son of Sifa uh, C- and Trevor. I mean, it's it's Richter, dude. It's fucking Richter Belmont. This is gonna be awesome. Is it Richter? I thought it was Simon Belmont. Oh, so, so. I'm looking at the tweet right now. It is Richter Belmont. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. okay calm down. Man. I will fight you. Man. Oh, God. 
Hey, you God, get you two say, bourbons in a man, and he just wants to fight. Oh no, you, you I got say, through a third. I got through a third one off camera. You, you, you say you say one wrong word, and the dude bro comes out. I know. Jeez. Gosh, Josh is he's feisty when he's three bourbons in. <laughs> Sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> Josh really needs to eat dinner because all he's had to eat this afternoon is popcorn. I mean, you're drinking bread right now, right? That's how. No, that's beer. Never mind. I've been up since four thirty. I'm tired. Yes, <laughs> uh, jeez. Oh, and then they also showed the cast, uh, uh, the cast for The Witcher season two. Uh, the show seems to be focusing more on Siri this this go around. So, which we kind of knew was what was gonna it was going to happen with but, the way yeah. they ended season one. It, it had to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Netflix geeked week uh, kind of came and went and. Not gonna lie, didn't I? I, I don't really care. <laughs> I I know we will be doing a Witcher weekly review when it starts uh, on the website. Cool. Yeah. There was that. some other stuff during the week that was like pretty cool because it was a whole week long event. Right. Yeah. Just today was like most of the what game was stuff. The, like, was there anything? What was the other interesting stuff announced this week? I, uh, I kind of Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, which yeah, is the animated Evil. series. Uh, right. Yesterday, it's Leon and Claire. And it is canonical. It takes place after RE4. Huh. Uh, and that's coming, like, the first few minutes are already up. Like, that's coming out at the end of the month, I think. Uh, Kevin Smith's Masters of the Universe was I did shown. See that. I did see that trailer. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I don't know. Like, I, I know those were yesterday. iCarly I got a uh, new trailer. Is that coming on Netflix? It's coming to no, Paramount+. Yeah. Plus. It's Paramount+. Yeah, it's Paramount+. Plus. Paramount jumped though on the same band, or like they they saw Netflix was doing stuff, and they they sent out like three different trailers for stuff. Gotcha. Um, the new one currently was one of them, and Rugrats, I think. But by the way, you something like that, yeah. The press tour that they're gonna do for iCarly is going to be interesting because we are already getting the "Where is Sam?" stuff going around. It's gonna end up getting brought up at every single freaking interview. Wait, wait, Sam. Sam. I don't. I didn't watch iCarly, so I don't know. Sam is the blonde girl who is kind of oh, mean okay. to oh, everybody. Okay. Okay. She's not in the show because she. I believe it was the Johnny Depp stuff. Yeah. Did yeah. Wait. Didn't she just kind of like drop out of acting behind all that stuff? Yeah. Too? Like yeah. Hollywood. Hollywood won't cast her anymore. Hmm. Well. That'll be an interesting discussion for another day, I guess, when Logan starts reviewing iCarly episodes for Boss Rush Network. Uh, I'm looking to see if there's anything else that we missed the last couple days, uh, because I really haven't been able to keep up with this stuff either. Uh, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of anime stuff announced yesterday. Cool. Uh, anything Josh is excited for in anime world? In anime world? Um, I can't believe I'm going to say this. Zack Snyder is doing an anime, and I'm like actually kind of excited. Oh. It's a Zack Snyder anime about Norse gods, oh, God. starring uh, John Noble, Corey Stoll, and Jamie Chung. All right, you got me. I know who two of those three people are. John Noble is playing Odin. Oh, so Love I'm it. very Boy. excited for that one. Uh, Rahu yeah, Kohli is in it. Mm. Oh, I'm in. Yeah, I, I'll absolutely watch that. There's a uh, there's one in here that uh, there's an anime that's being done with one of the character designers from the Final Fantasy series. Uh, called Exception. That sounds really cool. I think that's coming out next year. A futuristic horror anime, uh, and it's a uh, got yeah, it's got character designs uh, from uh, Yoka, Yoshitaka Amano. I want to make sure I get that name right. Mm-hmm. That sounds cool. Uh, but now I'm not seeing a whole lot else. I think today was most of the stuff that we're all excited about. Right. Right. Well, guys. I think that's going to wrap Boss Rush at Night E3 2021. Night one. It's past Laurent's bedtime. I can see yeah, it's going to be my bedtime. Well, it's, it's, uh, well, it's, 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 it's dark hours. Like I got, I got people to text. <laughs> I got people to Jesus text. Christ. <laughs> On that note, uh, you can join us right back here tomorrow night at 8.30 where we're going to discuss Ubisoft, Gearbox, Devolver Digital, and uh, whatever else is cool. Uh, some same panel, some new new faces, uh, all that kind of stuff. 
you know, we will check the show notes for plugs and stuff. This is this is kind of an out of the ordinary type thing. So, uh, mm-hmm. twitch.tv slash Boss Rush Games Live. You can catch the archived YouTube videos the next morning. Also going up on podcast feeds. So you will see various uh, episodes pop up on the various feeds wherever they fit. So, I want to thank everybody mm-hmm. for watching us live on Boss Rush Games at night. And we will see you tomorrow night. Goodbye, guys. Signing off. Did you just say signing off? I did. And that's the way it is. And that's the way the cookie crumbles.